Welcome to Kevin Deal Photography, where I take you on my journey through photography. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the exciting announcement of the brand new RF-135 F1.8 IS. Welcome to today's episode. If you're not familiar with Kevin Deal Photography, I do gear reviews, tips, techniques, and tutorials, and sometimes I dive into film. If any of that sounds appealing to you, click the subscribe button below. So the EF-135 F2 is a legendary lens that finds itself in the bags of many portrait photographers, myself included. My go-to focal lengths are 35, 50, and 85. However, when I need to go longer than 85, I always go to my trusty 135 f2. I love this lens so much that I don't even own an RF 70-200 or an EF 70-200 If you want to learn why I don't use a 70-200 you can check out my review of the RF 70-200 in the description below, and you can learn why I prefer to use the 135 f2 instead. But I love this lens and it has very large shoes to fill if Canon's gonna come out with the RF 135 uh, 1.8 IS. However, I do have faith that it's gonna be better than this and there's precedent for it. There are examples of it. So for instance, if you take the 50 1.2 in the RF mount and you take the 85 1.2 in the RF mount, both of those lenses are noticeably better than their predecessors that were made in the 90s. So, with Canon taking almost five years since the introduction of the RF mount to make this lens, uh, there's little reason for me to believe that the new version of it isn't going to uh, blow our minds as far as image quality. I would be shocked if it didn't. Uh, so, let's talk about what they've announced. They said that the new lens is going to have a slightly more complex design than this. It's going to use 17 elements and 12 groups, nine rounded aperture blades, which is great. Uh, and then it looks like there's opportunities for the new version of this lens to produce better bokeh. Uh, the reason being, obviously, it goes from f2 to 1.8, so it's a little bit more open. And the minimum focusing distance is now 70 centimeters, whereas the old one, I believe, was 90 centimeters. So you're able to get a little bit closer, and you're able to open up your aperture a little bit more. And of course, that should produce better resulting bokeh. So if you're into bokeh, like I am, being a portrait photographer who loves to shoot wide open, I'm very intrigued by this new lens. However, there's more. In addition to the fact that it goes to 1.8, there's two buttons, one on the top, one on the side. It looks like Canon is following Sony's lead there. Uh, and you know what? That's okay. If your competition comes up with a good idea, steal it. Unless, of course, you want to make AF third-party RF lenses. Uh, but anyway, the button on the top and the button on the side, uh, that could come in handy for videographers or people such as myself. Maybe I just want to quickly dial up my white balance. Or if you're a videographer or something like your zebras, that's really cool. In addition to that, you've got IS. So now you have uh, image stabilization built into the, the lens in addition to your camera body as long as you don't own an R10 or an RP. So you have up to eight stops of image stabilization, which is a good thing because you're talking about a longer focal length, 135, and if you're on a R7, it's like having a 216 millimeter. You have to keep your shutter speed higher in order to get sharper images, but now that you have this extra stabilization, there's a really good argument to upgrade to this lens. If you're a user who is new to the RF mount and you don't own a 135, I think that this is a no-brainer if you find yourself shooting or wanting to shoot at that focal length. Whether or not you should upgrade, that's kind of a that's kind of a personal question. For me, this is the last lens that I use on the EF to RF adapter. So for me, I'm kind of intrigued about getting off of this adapter uh, because I don't use drop-in filters and things like that. And if I decide to use drop-in filters, I'll probably get like a Kalari Vision filter for the inside. So I personally have no problem uh, ditching the mount and going to the new lens if it's better. Uh, however, I may not get rid of this lens because I use Canon EF film cameras, and there's something special about these coatings. I have a sneaking suspicion that the new lens isn't going to look anything like the old lens, and they actually would each have their own character, so there's a really good argument to maybe keep the older lens. But I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of both the lenses when the new lens arrives, and then you can judge for yourselves as to whether or not the upgrade makes sense to you. 
So anyway, uh, we're just talking about speculation at this point. Uh, I don't have any image examples or anything. I'm not that cool. I don't get advanced stuff from Canon. But uh, if you like what you saw, tell me in the comments below. Are you planning on upgrading to the RF 135 1.8 IS that's going to replace this guy? Tell me in the comments below. Uh, I appreciate your comments, your likes, suggestions. I appreciate your subscriptions. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.